Hi everyone, just wanted to put a quick intro in saying this is a playthrough of the Fortune and Folly scenario for Arkham Horror. So the spoilers throughout, as soon as I'm finished here, you will see locations and stuff. Also, I realized that I just kind of jump in assuming that you know how the basic game works. If you are new to Arkham Horror the card game, I'll put a link to my original playthrough for just the very first scenario of the original game in the description. Other than that though, let's get on with a casino heist. Enjoy. Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Arkham Horror the card game. I'm going to be playing a two-player game today of the latest standalone scenario, Fortune and Folly. This is the early Arkham Knights version. The full release will be coming in April, I think. And I'm going to be playing with two of the latest investigators from the Scarlet Keys Investigator expansion. I'm going to be playing Daryl Simmons, the photographer. And Little Glass Marty has joined me today to be Amina Zidane, the operator. Now I've only returned to the Arkham card game a couple of months ago, really. And I am absolutely at the stage of using amazing decks and marvelling at them uh, made by users on Arkham DB. And I'll put the links to both of the decks in the description, should you be be interested. They were both made by Valentin1331 and they sound pretty exciting. Before we get started, everything I do is made possible by Patreon. If you like what I do, if you watch this and you decide you like it and you're able to, I would very much appreciate your support over on there. Or there is a Ko-fi link as well. They're both linked in the description. Your support will be massively appreciated and is the reason I'm able to be doing this right now. Similarly, if, if you'd like to see more Arkham Horror the card game, maybe a campaign at some point. I don't know when that'd be, but let me know. I recommend you turn on the Klingon subtitles. Any mistakes I make will be corrected there. As I said, I've only been playing again for a couple of months. There's a billion cards and interactions in this game, and I've got a billion cameras and wires and things going on as well. Mistakes will happen, both of the rules and strategy variety. I'd appreciate your input on either of them, or any input at all, really, as long as you're nice. Right, that's enough pre-preliminary blabbing. Let's get on to the introduction of the game. I'm going to be using the Arkham Cards app today to handle some of the admin for me. It's totally optional. And it's totally amazing. I know that the scenario books themselves are really well made and they've got some lovely extra art and stuff in there. But especially when you're in a campaign in terms of like, has this happened? If this has happened, do this. The app does it all for me and I really appreciate it. It's an amazing app. And for me anyway, it's a must have. The scenario does, of course, come with cards with all of the story and set up on. And when it releases properly in April, it will have a lovely booklet and that. On with the story. Care to try your luck? A casino in Monte Carlo is using probability manipulating powers to accumulate wealth at the cost of endangering the populace. In Fortune and Folly, investigators must plan and execute a daring heist in order to capture the source of this cult's power and put a stop to their nefarious work. But will their meddling turn fortune in their favour, or will their luck run out? So we've got Daryl and Amina playing today. I'm going to play on standard difficulty. Now you can play this scenario, of course, as a side scenario in a big campaign. And I think it's a bit more difficult if you play it standalone and everything. The bag that is. And I would normally always use the, the proper bag. But again, for purposes of clarity and stuff, I'm just going to use the app. This time, anyway. We'll see how all of this goes. There's a lot of things set up I'm not too sure about right now. Uh, so I've already done the basic weaknesses. We are playing with decks that have 29 XP in them. So when you play a standalone scenario of Arkham card game, you can give yourself as much XP as you like. But you have to take an extra basic weakness for every 10 XP that you give yourself. So that's why it's kind of sneaky. Okay, we'll do 19 XP. We'll do 29 XP to avoid, you know, the, the next weakness. So we do have the standard investigator weakness and basic weakness, and then two extra for that 29 XP that we've got in there. We've got some pretty exciting stuff in there, I think. There are a ton of story bits of new rules bits. So some rules things. There are checkpoints. There are two parts, basically, to this scenario. You can play them separately. You can play them all in one go if you want. There's rules for putting it away or not. Alarm level. We are sneaking around a casino, remember, performing a heist. Based on what we do, our alarm level might go up or down. We have Doom next to our investigator cards that show you the alarm level of our investigators. They start at one, the higher your alarm level, the more chance bad things will happen, the more aware the casino will be of what you're up to. It can't go below one, it can't go above ten. Although we're using Doom tokens, it's not Doom, and it doesn't count towards the threshold of the scenario. The big thing to remember is if your alarm level goes to six or higher, the casino enemies lose aloof means they might become a lot more of a problem. A lot of the enemies in this scenario have the patrol keyword. Around when hunters would move, enemies are going to patrol. Now, for the purposes of our first part, there is a ring of locations here. 
and enemies will either say patrol counterclockwise or patrol clockwise. They're going to move one space in that direction. Although these two connections are connected here in the middle, they're just going to move in a big ring around the outside essentially game icons so i can show you from the card you might already have seen uh, the encounter cards in this scenario all have game icons in the corner suits of cards we're in a casino remember you might be asked the color the rank which you know goes from four to king or the suit which could be hearts diamonds uh, clubs or spades some tests you might be able to take a mulligan with you know the the game cards when you're gambling mulligans work as normal but they're with encounter cards. And the Wellspring of Fortune, we can see that up here. This is a key, a new card type that's gonna be introduced in the Scarlet Keys campaign. The rules of how keys work are gonna be in the Scarlet Keys campaign expansion, which isn't out yet. In this scenario, it is an objective. It's a marker that's got tokens on it. There is text underneath these clues. I'm not purposely hiding it, I thought, well, the text doesn't mean anything in this scenario, so better to cover that than the art. If you're using it in the Scarlet Keys campaign, though, not only is there some extra stuff, uh, but you might be able to gain this for that scenario. I'm excited to see what that will mean. Enough of that, though. Let's go to part one, the stakeout. Amina's going to be our lead investigator. Man struck by lightning twice minutes after winning big. This sensational headline is what first grabbed your attention. You might have written it off as just an extraordinary and unlikely event exaggerated to sell papers if it weren't for the other stories that followed, all centering around the same place, a casino in Monte Carlo called Defi de la Roulette. In addition to the unlucky patron being struck down mere moments after leaving the casino with his winnings, others have also met grisly yet improbable fates, either within or nearby. Upon inquiring further, it seems that this casino appeared quickly and unexpectedly, and the authorities in Monaco have been suspiciously tight-lipped about where exactly it came from and who owns it. Since its opening, the casino has been a magnet for the unnatural and implausible. The more you learn, the more it seems worth at least taking a look to determine whether these events are simply coincidence or the result of something much more sinister. And you can see it's asking, are you using this as part of the Scarlet Keys campaign? The app already knows, know that we're not, and shows us the relevant portion. I love it. Although you ask around town about the casino for several days, promising leads seem to be scarce. When you visit the casino itself, nothing appears out of place, although your probing questions don't go entirely unnoticed. As you sit in the casino lounge, assessing whether the trip to Monte Carlo was a complete waste of time, and if nothing is amiss here after all, a woman in a striking red dress sits down at your table. Table. You recognize her as Isamara Ordonez, the singer who had performed just moments before, capturing the audience with her hauntingly beautiful voice. A casual smile adorns her face, but her words are sharp and pointed. You're being too careless. We can't talk here. If you want to know the truth, meet me in an hour. She hands you a card with the address of a nearby cafe. She then stands, smoothing out her dress. Thank you so much for the kind words about my performance, she says for the benefit of anyone nearby. Hope to see you again soon. Isamara is wearing a long overcoat of the darkest blue when you meet, her wavy brown hair partially hidden beneath a wide-brimmed hat. Clearly, she is worried about someone recognising her. You're right to be suspicious about what's happening at Defi, she begins, wasting no time with pleasantries. On the surface, it's a casino like any other, but there's more going on than anyone could guess. Behind the scenes, a cult called the Fortune's Chosen are the ones that really run the show. They are deadly and dangerous. Anyone who has gotten too close to the truth or crossed the casino in some way has met a horrible fate. You ask about the casino owner and how involved he is with this cult. Isamara gives a mirthless smile. Aberan? He is their leader. Not just that, he is the worst of them all. He brought the casino here, but most importantly, he brought the wellspring. Isamara explains that the vault of the casino holds a strange and powerful relic of mysterious origin. It is this relic that is responsible for the unlikely events that seem to pop up around the casino. This item is known as the wellspring of fortune, and it has the power to manipulate probability and luck. Aberan guards it jealously, as whoever possesses the wellspring is able to turn fortune to their cause, no matter how selfish and destructive that cause may be. Over time, he has created the loyal cadre of the fortunes chosen by granting them some measure of the benefits of the wellspring. They have come to revere it almost as a god. These true believers can be easily distinguished from the regular casino employees by the distinctive coin medallions they wear around their necks. Aberan trusts me for some reason, and he's even offered me to join. I think he views me as a potential asset, Isamara mutters. You ask Isamara what she would have you do. 
Steal the wellspring, take it far away from here. I don't know how to say it more plainly. As long as it is in Aberan's grasp, he will use it to aggrandize himself. Even worse, I fear that the longer its powers are used, the greater the chance of harm coming to those in the casino. Who knows what seemingly impossible catastrophes it may summon if it is not removed. Her words seem not so much a plea for help as a call to action. You find yourself agreeing to the task almost without conscious thought. As you move to stand, she stops you with her hand. One last thing, do not underestimate Aberan. He is a dangerous man. He puts on a face of civility to the world, but underneath that mask there is a barely contained anger that can explode if he feels his prize is threatened. I've seen his temper, and I don't doubt it could drive him to tear a man limb from limb with his bare hands if he felt he had the cause. Left with that cheery thought, you begin planning a heist with the highest stakes. Would you like to skip the stakeout and jump straight to the heist? Warning, skipping the stakeout will dramatically increase the difficulty of part two. No thank you, I would love to stake out. Several days later, you meet with Isamara to discuss a plan for staking out the casino in advance of the heist. Isamara explains what you need to look for as the night of the stakeout approaches, warning that you will not have time to accomplish everything. What follows is a summary of the information Isamara conveys to the investigators about the upcoming stakeout of the casino. High rollers are held in high regard. If you throw enough money around, it will open up options during the heist. Obtaining a uniform from one of the casino employees could go a long way towards allowing you to pass by unnoticed. Isamara is very invested in the heist, but she is also understandably concerned about getting directly involved. Perhaps you can change her mind? The more money you win, the greater the chance that the casino will have to roll out cash carts to the busy night of the heist. These carts happen to have enough space for a person to hide inside. Somewhere in the casino is a major vent that runs from the public areas directly to the employee areas, bypassing the normal employee entrance. Aberan keeps the keys to his office on his person while making his daily rounds. It's a risk, but if you can get the keys off him, you won't have to find a way into his office later. There is a space within the main hall of the casino that can be used to hide assets for the heist. Any assets placed here will be immediately available when the big night begins. The wellspring of fortune feeds off and manipulates forces of fortune and luck. The more you play games of chance, the easier and faster it will be to gain control of it later. Finally, the more clues you can gather about casino operations, the better your chances of keeping a low profile when it comes time for the actual heist, and the more prepared you will be for your role. So the app then tells us what we need to do to set up this scenario. I have done it all, but some things to note. So this is the public area of the casino. We are in the casino floor. Isamara is at the Baccarat table. We can parlay with her to try and convince her to help out. There's a casino guard at the roulette wheel that's got a uniform that might fit one of us. The revealed locations are actually double-sided locations. That's why we can see them already. At the casino floor, we can stash things for the night of the heist. At the casino lounge, we can look for the vent. At the high rollers table, we can gamble away and try and convince everyone that we are the high rollers. And at that table at the moment is Abaran Arigori Agakoa, the man with the ruby ring. If we would ever engage Abaran, then we would advance the agenda immediately. Spoilers, there is one agenda in this part. We can try and steal his keys from him. Another thing that we have got is a role in this heist. Amina is the muscle. She is hopefully going to be handling all of the enemies this scenario. When she defeats casino enemies, she can reduce her alarm level. And Daryl is the grifter. He's hopefully going to be our clue boy. But being the grifter, he can increase his alarm level to manipulate his odds at the games of chance. Or if he just succeeds at them naturally, he can reduce his alarm level. So our agenda and act. The house always watches. You have arrived at defeat de la roulette. If you are to recover the wellspring, you must learn all that you can about this casino and the cult that operates it. At the start of the enemy phase, every investigator who is at the same location as a ready casino enemy raises their alarm level by one, and after someone defeats a casino enemy, raise that investigator's alarm level by one. Casing the joint. You must tread carefully, as arousing suspicion may ruin your plans before they have even begun. After you trigger an action on a game location, remove a clue from the Wellspring of Fortune, which has 14 clues on it in our two-player game. Two clues instead if you gained resources from the game location. So if, if you won your game of chance. Our objective, accomplish as many tasks as you can and get out before you are noticed. Let's introduce our investigators. Amina Zidane. 
A refugee from French-occupied Algeria, Amina arrived in Arkham with nothing more than she could carry. Six years later, Amina's sharp mind and technical skill placed her at the switchboard for the Miskatonic Valley Telephone Company. Soon after, she began to catch snippets of something strange while at work. Distorted words in an unrecognisable language, out-of-place noises, calls that connected to nowhere at all, and dropped almost immediately. As the phantom calls grew in frequency, Amina sought answers. She found the right extension connected to the line and listened in. Despite not understanding a word of the alien language on the other side, she could tell the eldritch words held real power. She has threes for all her ability. Five health, nine sanity. And she is kind of all about doom. Normally, a terrible thing. We don't want doom anywhere. Amina does. When she plays an asset... She can reduce its resource cost by three. So massive savings, but it will enter play with a doom on it. Once per round, she can do that. And if she draws an Elder Sign, she gets plus two. Uh, you may move all doom from a card at your location to another card at your location. One of the XP upgrades she's got to help with all of this is Sin Eater. It's a permanent, so it's out at the start. And she can exhaust it to move a doom from another asset that she has to Sin Eater. And then for an action, she can remove all doom from Sin Eater. Hopefully, it's all going to work out very nicely. She's got a couple of very important cards in her starting hand. So she is going to play for her first action, El Rubash, and she will use her ability. She will reduce its resource cost to nothing, which will pop a doom on it. I should put this there to remind me. I have done that this round. So I've spent an action. The lovely tokens, are, by the way, are all from Buy the Same Token. I'll put a link to them in the description as well. I bought them, by the way, if that matters to you. So L Rubash is going to be great. Hopefully, you can exhaust L to attach assets to her as long as they've got at least one Doom on them. And when you do tests with those assets, you get plus one skill value. The other huge bonus is one Doom on each attached asset does not count towards the Doom limit for the scenario. And we can have up to two things attached to L. I can already see that I'm probably going to have to do some reorganization of this play area. So second action, we are going to put the Abyssal Tome out here. This is going to be Amina's attacking stuff. So that costs her two of her starting five resources. So we're gearing up. Maybe enemies are going to come out. Uh, and then I think she will use Sin Eater's ability. It's going to go off camera, isn't it? Warp that Doom to Sin Eater. We won't get rid of it so far. And I think we're going to go around this way. She is going to move. Move. let's move to the poker table and see what's waiting for us here the poker tables are constantly in demand each game filled with players from around the continent and the world clattering fills the air as piles of chips are relentlessly pushed and stacked each one a bet against destiny the air is thick with smoke sweat and the tension of a good bluff so let's have a look at what we find here we find some clues so it's got a clue per investigator shroud value of three as an action here we can play some poker spend two resources to discard the top five cards of the encounter deck check their game icons you may mulligan once if all five cards have a sequential rank or if three or more cards have the same rank gain five resources that's all of amina's actions for now though so we are going to move on to daryl even while growing up in arkham daryl always knew that there was something not quite right about the strange little town after graduating from high school he went to work for the arkham advertiser as a photographer and in the years since he scoured every inch of the city but on one fateful night he saw something truly indescribable a horror that shook his world to the core his editor says he was just seeing things, but he knows the truth. With his trusty camera in tow, he will not rest until he has captured photographic evidence of the horrors that dwell in the shadows of his hometown and beyond. Just one good shot is all he needs. So he is very good at investigating, as you might expect. He comes out with his camera, Daryl's Kodak. So after an enemy or treachery enters play, he can exhaust his Kodak to put a resource from the token pool on that enemy or treachery as evidence. And after he discovers any number of clues, he can move that many evidence on enemies or treacheries where he is to his Kodak. So what's evidence? It's going to come out in more cards as well. But just looking at his investigator card here. So it doesn't take an action. During a skill test at your location, spend an evidence from an asset you control to reduce the difficulty of this test by two. He can only do it once per test, but that's pretty good. And his elder sign effect, plus one, place an evidence on an asset you control. The truth is darker than any of us know. 
He's also got Relic Hunter, a permanent that gives him an additional accessory slot and short supply. At the start of his first turn, which is now, he discards the top 10 cards of his deck. Now in doing that, he's lost some good cards as you might expect, but he's got ways of getting cards back out of his discard pile. But one thing that has happened is, two of his four weaknesses have been discarded this way. Now, we might well go through Daryl's deck, so... It's not to say we won't be encountering them at all, but that's a bit of breathing room, isn't it? He's going to put out this newspaper for an action. It gives him plus two to his intellect when he's investigating if he has no clues. If he would discover one or more clues when he doesn't have any, he gets an additional clue. Now we've got some great cards that I'd like to get out, but we're going to spend an action moving over to the poker table with Amina. I was going to say, let's investigate and get both of these clues but let's gamble he's going to spend two of his four resources and he discards the top five cards of the encounter deck we want a sequence or three of a kind so we can take a mulligan once so we either want to discard the duplicates and hope to get a run in these or we could discard say Say so I've got a good feeling about nines. We could discard the other three and just hope for one more nine. We need a straight or three of a kind. And have I got it? The seven. Didn't we have two sevens? We did. I got rid of two sevens. Jack eight. No, I haven't done it. But Daryl is our grifter. When you check game icons when resolving an ability on a game location, exhaust the grifter and choose one. Either reduce your alarm level by one or increase your alarm level by one to change the rank, suit, or color of a discarded game icon. These are all discarded, by the way, is what we're doing, to anything. So we can only change one thing about the card, but I'll exhaust this, increase my alarm level to two, and I will say, this was a nine. So he's got three of a kind here, or you could change one to 10, couldn't you? And then he's got a straight. Either way, the casino's a bit suspicious about what just happened there. His alarm level's gone up, but for those two resources he spent, he gains five. That's his last action spent. And remember, when people take actions on game locations, we need to come over to the Wellspring of Fortune. If they play the game, we remove a clue. If they gain resources from the game, so if they win the game, we remove another clue. So we are down to 12 on the Wellspring of Fortune. We don't know how that's going to help us yet, but you know, it told us play games of chance. So that is it for the first round. In the enemy phase, the only thing that's going to happen is the patrol. So Aberan is going to patrol clockwise and the casino guard is going to patrol counterclockwise. Not respectful of the room I've got on this table, guys. Then we need to ready everything we each gain a resource and a card and now we have our first mythos phase so we need to add a doom to the agenda it's our second of eight because there is one sitting on amina's sin eater there hopefully we can get rid of that though and we need some encounter cards so Amina gets inconvenient questioning the nearest non-unique casino enemy moves once toward you and you test intellect three. So Aberan is unique. He's got the you know the diamond there. Uh, so the casino guard is going to move one space towards Isamara, which might not be a bad thing actually. And then she needs to test intelligence. Her intelligence is three. She can discard any number of cards to help with this test. She could cancel it with Ward of Protection. Play when you've got a non-weakness treachery card. Cancel the effect and take a horror. I could help a bit. Maybe one of my scavenging cards. It's got two intelligence for her. I think my research notes, I wouldn't mind them being in my discard pile actually. So I've only given her one intellect. So she's got four right now. Let's draw from the chaos bag. It's minus three. So she fails. Raise your alarm level by one and each non-unique casino enemy at your location loses aloof until the end of the round. So probably not going to be going to do that uniform right now because he'll be a bit annoyed about it. He is far away anyway though. So that's Amina's handled and then Daryl has found a casino guard. Spawn at the high rollers table or the guard room, whichever is closest to you. How do you know when you haven't left enough room for cards? Uh, he's going to go on the high rollers table then. Two counterclockwise guards. If you raise your alarm while you are at the casino guard's location, take a damage. And there's two of those coming in to the baccarat table. Oh, not forgetting when an enemy comes out, we exhaust Daryl's camera to put an evidence 
on that enemy. So he wants to investigate where that god is and get the evidence of him. I think Daryl's going to go first, partly because I think I know what he's going to do on his turn. So Daryl's first action is going to be to play Scavenging, which is a lovely cheap card. Uh, it's upgraded version. After you successfully investigate by two or more, you can exhaust scavenge and choose an item from your discard pile and either add it to your hand or play it, ignoring its cost, without paying an action for it. That's why we thought we probably wouldn't succeed with Amina's test, but Research Notes is now in the discard pile and now could be played without an action. Second action, he is going to investigate at the poker table. The shroud value is three. We use intelligence to investigate. It's going to be five, six, seven, because he has no clues. He would like to succeed by two or more. He's not going to commit anything else. Let's see what he gets. He gets the hood. The Hooded Claw. Reveal another token. If you fail, raise your alarm by one. I like that it also tells us at the bottom what the scenario card is. So draw another. And it's a plus one. Brilliant. So he succeeds by more than two as well. And some things are going to chain already. So he discovers a clue from the poker table for investigating successfully. When you would discover one or more clues at your location, if you have no clues, discover an additional clue. So he gets both of those and... After you successfully investigate by two or more, exhaust scavenging to choose an item. It's going to be research notes. It still costs him the resource, but didn't cost him the action. And it came from his discard pile. So this is going to be good when we start dropping clues at locations, which quick study will let us do. Put one of your clues on your location and exhaust quick study to get plus three skill for this test. So he played scavenging. He investigated his last action. He is going to move over to the Baccarat table. Baccarat has been popular among French nobility and aristocrats for over a century, perhaps longer. Even in this casino, this seems to remain true, with the most well-dressed and ostentatious sitting around the Baccarat table. Just so he's there ready for next time. Maybe he's going to poly with Isamara a bit. Maybe he's going to play some Baccarat. So there's two clues here, and as an action, we can play some Baccarat. Okay, we maybe should have cancelled Amina's test, because if she goes in here and she's here at the end of the investigation phase, the enemy's going to come in here and she hasn't got a loof, so she's going to get hit twice. So she either runs all the way up there, she can only do one action though, so the other's still going to hit her, so I think she needs to stay. She's just going to be playing poker, I think. I mean, she could go the other way, check out the slot machines or something. She wants to fight, so when they come in here at the end of the round, and next round she's really going to get um, some action, I think. She's just going to play some poker. Should have cancelled that treachery card, or, or worked harder to win the test. Uh, she's going to spend two resources, look at the top five cards, and she wants a straight or three of a kind. So straight, I mean, she'd want to discard these and get like a nine and a jack or a six or something like that. But she has got two tens. I don't think we've seen any tens. She's going to discard these three with the mulligan you're allowed for playing poker. And then draw up, she finds jack, queen, jack. So oh, she's got two pair, but that's not good enough in this game of poker. We do, however, remove a clue from the wellspring, whether she succeeds or not. She might just end up losing all of her money here she's gonna gamble again then and she's got <laughs> here's the other nines and tens so again not great for a straight is it this is the end of the encounter deck so we're gonna have to shuffle it so odds of what's come out there's no counting cards involved here she'll bet on tens again she'll keep those and mulligan the rest and she gets she finds a 10 so she's got three of a kind she wins this time she gets five resources, and when you succeed, you take two off the wellspring. And then, yeah, she's going to do it again. So I, hopefully this isn't an enormous waste. But as I said, I've messed up not um, doing that uh, test for her. So she has got, oh, queens and jacks. So tens, I think, well, we've we got three tens last time, didn't she? So that's not happening. Straight, I mean, there's ten queen jack. I don't think, we did see some nuns. We haven't seen a king. Does she go for three of a kind again? She's going to try for three of a kind with jacks and she gets seven, eight, nine. Would that have been enough? No, it wouldn't. Uh, there's no way of winning with that one. But she does still take another clue off the wellspring. So that's left us with eight on there now. That's not too bad, is it? That is a whole round for her, though. So in the enemy phase, the guards will move to this location. Somehow we need to indicate that in this tight space. Amina isn't there, so they're still aloof. Daryl's just playing some Baccarat, talking to the lounge singer. Nothing going on here. Aberrant goes and checks out the roulette table. Reset everyone and get a resource and a card. Oh dear. Now I'd say this is a bit unfair because Daryl hasn't really had a chance to get evidence on things yet. 
He could have tried harder, probably. Uh, remove four evidence from cards you control. I'm about to get a load of evidence. Uh, for each evidence you cannot remove in this way, take a horror. So it is done with now, but we have no evidence on his cards. I was about to, when he investigates here, he would get to get the evidence off the casino guard. When he would drop clues, he would get evidence on here. It would have worked out so well. But as it stands, uh, his sanity has just plummeted. Ouch. And Amina... We're both pretty resource rich right now. Moonlight Ritual, move, remove all Doom from a non-elite card at your location. New round, a Doom on the agenda, so we've got three total at the moment. And in counter cards, Amina gets the Security Patrol, who is going to spawn at the Casino Lounge or Security Office. Does Daryl want to put an evidence on that? Probably not. Maybe if he draws one and it comes closer... Maybe that would be better. It's going clockwise, so it's going to be a while, I think, before we encounter them. Although he could go straight over there. The plan is to go to the high rollers table there. He's not going to put an evidence on it. And Daryl, obsessed gambler. Uh, put it into play in your threat area. Limit one per investigator. At the end of your turn, take a horror if you didn't gain resources. Then test will three if you succeed, discard this obsessed gambler. So he's going to want to play some Baccarat or just take an action to gain resources. Well, that's not as exciting, is it? Oh, he can put, he can put an evidence on his treachery, can't he? Yeah, let's do that. So he's going to put Quick Study out. That'll cost him two, and it means that he can drop clues to amp up his skill tests. He's going to play Baccarat. Let's uh, hope this goes okay. He's going to go, what's the low value? Do we say Banker for that one? Banker. It is a pair of eights. That is lower than 18, so he wins. Gets four resources, and we can remove two clues from the Wellspring. It's only got six on it. So he's gained resources. We don't have to worry about that anymore. And he won without manipulating, so we can use his Grifter card. We can exhaust that to lower his alarm level, which is nice. He's going to investigate for his final action. He's gonna, he is gonna play deduction now, and he is going to exhaust this and drop a clue at his location to get plus three skill value. So looking at his research notes, after a player card ability puts one or more clues on your location, place that many resources on research notes as evidence. And then as an action later on, uh, we can test intelligence zero for each point you succeed by. You can spend an evidence to discover a clue. Or we can use this evidence for Daryl's main ability. Cool. Okay, then, so he's investigating for five, eight, nine. And if he succeeds, he'll get an extra clue. Will the Chaos Bag be kind? It is. Oh, dear. The Elder Thing, minus five. You may raise your alarm level by one to automatically succeed instead. Well, that is... Yeah, it could be worse. If he did choose to raise his alarm to automatically succeed, by the way, both of these would deal him a damage, so he doesn't want to do that. Uh, but nine minus five... He still succeeds, he just doesn't get to do his scavenging, which is unfortunate. So he's getting an additional clue because he played this deduction. So grabbing two clues, and remember the Kodak, after you discover any number of clues, move that many evidence on enemies or treacheries at that location, or not at any location like this one, uh, to Daryl's Kodak. So he has got both of those as evidence, which we can use for tests in future rounds. So we're starting to get going there. So he did gain resources, so he doesn't have to take a horror from his obsessive gambling. Does he want to use... He wants to keep hold of the Arcane Enlightenment. Definitely doesn't want to get rid of that. He's only got two will. It's unlikely he is going to succeed at this, but we've got to try. So he gets minus X, half your alarm level rounded up. So two minus one, that would be. Fails, so he is still going to be an obsessed gambler. So Amina is going to try and grab the uniform. If the uniform fits, this casino employee looks like they are wearing a uniform in your size. Perform this attack only on the attached enemy. So she will do this special fight action. So she's got a test, strength three. Her strength is three. She can only commit one of these overpowers for plus two. So she's got five. Chaos Bag says zero. That will do for us. So when overpower succeeds, she gets to draw a card. Oh dear. Well, that's not good. She just have to take a damage. One of her basic weaknesses is this mob enforcer. She can actually, she got a load of resources. She could actually do the parlay to just discard him rather than having to fight him. She'll fight him later probably though, but we've got other things to do. Oh, we did have other things to do. That's just messed everything up. She succeeds at this though. So attached enemy has been knocked out. Remember that you obtained an employee uniform. We do have a card here to uh, track all of this stuff. So we obtained an employee uniform. Oh no, raise your alarm level by one if another enemy is at your location or a connected location. 
That is true, so she's going to have to take a damage. Discard the attached enemy and remove this story card from the game. Now what to do? Because she needs to engage this casino guard to be able to attack him because he's aloof or evade him. But now she's got this mob enforcer. So if she tries, if she engages, the mob enforcer is going to hit her. She's going to fight the mob enforcer. She's going to have to, or she could just spend resources to get rid of it. She would be back down to two then though. She wants to fight though. Um, She's going to parlay the mob enforcer. I didn't want to do this. But yeah, she's got some resources to do that anyway so that's a weakness dealt with oh she's not even there asterisk the first so the first action is going to have to be to move here and then third action to parlay yeah that's what she's going to do so in the enemy phase at the start of it we are both in here so our alarm levels both go up a minus to three mine to two but after you raise your alarm level while the casino guard is here take a damage so it's not gone well at all i only got five health i've got six so it's still not great Oh no. And then they move so counterclockwise, clockwise, clockwise. We haven't done any parlaying yet. Oh, where's time going? Right. Then we need to refresh ourselves. Resource and a card. So Mina can manipulate her deck a little bit. Daryl could get some plus ones. I'll definitely play that. Right. New round then. Doom on the agenda. We've got four at the moment. Amina's card. Suspicious gaze. Test. Agility, three. If you fail to take damage equal to half your alarm level, round it up or raise your alarm level by one. She's just going to test without boosting. Uh, so it's an auto fail anyway. Very glad she didn't uh, try to succeed there then. Uh, she is going to raise her alarm level. The enemy isn't there anymore, so it's not so bad. And Daryl gets inconvenient questioning. So the nearest non-unique casino enemy moves once towards you. Actually... This might work out in our favor. Amina was going to run away to go and fight this security patrol. Uh, we'll bring him here. Oh, after he moves to your location during the enemy phase. That's okay. It's not the enemy phase. He makes your alarm level go up. So then test books three. Let's drop a clue to get eight, which gives us an evidence on here. We're only going to beat three. I think that's doable. And we get plus one. Didn't need to do anything. But I do kind of like it. It will be helpful having clues, but... I like bumping up that uh, evidence. We succeed, so the enemies uh, don't lose aloof and I don't need to raise my alarm level. Amina's going to go first. She is going to engage this security patrol, which is an action. Then she's going to use her abyssal tome. Exhaust abyssal tome. You may use your law or will instead of fists. She won't. She'll use her fist. But when you initiate this attack, place a doom on it to a maximum of three. She will. Uh, to get plus one skill value and deal plus one damage. So the fight of the security patrol is three. She's got three, four fists. She will use overpower for five, six. And she gets minus two. That'll do. So the security patrol is gone. Remember, we have to raise our alarm level. But because she is the muscle, she can exhaust this to reduce her alarm level by one. It would be two if there were no enemies in connecting locations. But the casino guard is just over there. So you heard something. We can't put it down loads but what she can now do is at last attach the abyssal tome to el rubash because she can only do this when there is a doom on the card so she'll get a plus one from it as well and the doom doesn't count towards the agenda it is exhausted so she couldn't attack again but what you could do is move the doom to the sin eater which readies the thing and then you'd get plus one from el Put another doom on it when you take the action and get another plus one. Oh, it could work out so well. So Amina engaged. She fought. And I think she is going to move on maybe to the roulette wheel. Just because we want to try and parlay with this Amara. And it makes it easier if um, Amina's alert level isn't here. Uh, so roulette wheel. Roulette seems to be a favorite of many patrons and the establishment itself. The casino is named after this icon of Monte Carlo gambling after all. So at the roulette wheel, you can spend a resource to play roulette, name a color and a rank, discard the top card of the encounter deck, check its game icon. If it matches the named color and rank, gain five resources. So a massive gain, it's unlikely though, isn't it? You've got to basically guess the top card of the deck. Good for the grifter, though. So that's Amina's turn. Daryl is going to play Baccarat to, again, try. And uh, the Obsessed Gambler's probably not going away. Uh, so the, the deck has been reshuffled. We are going to say Player. And it is Queen and a 7, just about. If it's lower than 18, you win. That is, uh, so he needs to pay 2, and he would get 4. So he's sitting on 
10 resources right now. Fast action, he can put Plucky into play. Costs nothing. Uh, it, the downside of this is that when you take damage and horror, it needs to be assigned to Plucky first, so you're more likely to lose it. But you get plus one will, plus one intelligence, and you can spend a resource as a fast action to get another plus one. And he's got resources to spend, hasn't he? So I think we're going to parlay a bit. So test heads X. His alert level is two. Oh, he succeeded at gambling, didn't he? So he can do the grifter. Do the grifter. Everybody's doing it. Uh, to lower his alarm level to one. So now it's just a will one check. He's only got will two, three, but he can spend a res he can spend resources for plus more. Uh, he will. He can lower the difficulty of the test by two, but. The downside of that is it would only really lower it by one, wouldn't it? He'll lower the difficulty of the test with his special action. So just once per test, he can do that. So it is a willpower zero test. So he can only fail with the auto fail, can't he? Because you, the modifiers can't take you below zero, I don't think. Uh, so yeah, there's no need to boost it anymore. So it's difficulty zero, not the auto fail. That's fine. So he's parlayed with Isamara. So put a clue from the token pool onto Isamara if there are... One times the number of investigated clues on her. Remember, you convinced her to participate in the heist. I think the last thing he's going to do here is investigate. Do the last parlay next turn. So he's got five, six versus four. He wants to succeed by two. He can reduce the, the difficulty by two. So it's six versus two. And he'll spend a resource. So he's got seven versus two here. He wants to succeed by two or more. And so he gets minus X, which is half of your alarm level rounded up. That is fine, isn't it? So he succeeds, he just gets the one clue, but he succeeded by two or more. He's going to put out this press pass. So he could take an item from his discard pile, put it into his hand, or play it paying its cost. Does cost a whopping four. After you spend one or more clues, or place one or more clues on your location, exhaust press pass to take an additional action this turn, or your next turn if it's not currently your turn. Pretty good stuff. He did gain resources, so he doesn't need to gain horror. He needs to test heads three. Should have kept his evidence. Uh, so he has got, th it's three versus three at the moment. He'll spend two, he doesn't want to, he's just spent loads of resources though. He's good at gambling though, isn't he? He'll spend two resources to boost his head so he doesn't have to panic about this all the time. I don't think we took two clues off when he won the gambling. There's only four clues on the wellspring now. So it's going to be five versus three. Come on, chaos bag. There we go, minus one. So that's gone away. And that's not a bad turn overall, I don't think. Back in the casino, the guards are patrolling, but not affecting us right now. They're actually both in on the casino floor having a little chat. Reset us resource and a card for Daryl. Quite good at captivating Discovery. And another one for Amina. And she's got another way of cancelling out treacheries, which we might really want to do. Uh, so back on the agenda, we have got five at the moment. Amina might want to clear things off with Sinita. And then Avarice calls. It's a peril, so she can't discuss this or get help from me. Choose to either take two horror or test Will, where Will is half your alarm level rounded up. So two. If you succeed, gain two resources. If you fail, take two horror and raise your alarm level. Do you know what? She'll choose to take the two horror and she'll use deny existence to cancel out gaining that horror. There we go. Simple. Then for Daryl. Oh, well, that's... It makes no difference. It was a waste getting rid of the other one, actually, because he's got it again. Uh, but he can put an evidence on it that he can hopefully clear off. Daryl is going to play Captivating Discovery. Search the top six cards of your deck. You may place up to three clues on your location. For each clue placed in this way, choose and add two of the search cards to your hand. So he could drop all of his clues to get all of these cards into his hand and just be spending them however he pleases. Basically, another press pass. Schofner's catalogue gives you resources that you can use to spend on items. He is going to drop all of his clues. Hopefully this works out. That lets him put three evidence on research notes. After you place clues on your location, you can take another action. So essentially, that playing that event didn't cost an action because we got one back from here. He can still drop one for quick study. He's going to move over to the high rollers table. He's going to play research notes. So test books zero. So he's got five right now. He can't drop a clue for plus three. He's got plus one from Plucky, haven't, hasn't he? So he's got six. He wants to get some of these cards played. His catalogs can go in the discard pile because they're items he can scavenge. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So as long as he succeeds, he'll get plus five. So they won't mind being in the discard pile. So on the chaos bag, we've got minus five. So kind of glad we did that. What do we have? 10 minus 5. So he can spend for each point you succeed by. So that's 5. You can spend an evidence to discover a clue. 
he can spend this four evidence to discover all four of these clues. That was his second action. And then if there are no clues here, spend four resources. Or actually, he just discovered any number of clues. He can get the evidence off of here as well. Brilliant. So he will spend four resources. This is a big gamble and it will help for his obsessed gambler. If he wins, this is a difficult one though. So if there are no clues here, spend four resources. Remember that you impersonated a high roller. So we don't need to succeed to satisfy, you know, the, the scenario's goals. Discard the top five cards of the encounter deck and check their game icons. You may mulligan once if all five have the same suit or a sequential rank, or if four are the same rank, gain eight resources. I've got two tens. I need four of a kind. Have we already had a ten? But I can lie as long as I draw one of the tens. I can use my ability. Yeah, we will go for tens. Mulligan. And I think actually... No, this was the first one. We wouldn't have made it if I'd tried to go for a sequence either. Or suit. I think we were destined to lose this. So I have zero resources now. That's bad. But we have impersonated a high roller. And that's one of our goals that will help us in the main heist. Is there a way of lying about this actually? Eight, nine... Before I start losing horror and stuff, 8, 9, 10, Jack, I, I can still lie. That's actually good. I could say this is a 7. And then all of them are in sequence. So I use my grifter, my alarm level goes up, but suddenly, look who's in the money and doesn't have to take a horror from their obsessed gambler. Okay, I've got three heads versus three. I think let's make the difficulty... Oh, the difficulty is really high at the casino lounge. I should have saved my clue getting for the casino lounge, I think. Let's keep that evidence there. Spend two resources. It's five versus three. And we get minus one. There we go. I'm fine with that. That's a pretty great turn for Daryl. Just uh, there gloating at the high rollers table. Amina is at the roulette wheel. Probably no fighting happening. It's not really going Amina's way. Oh, Daryl won money, didn't he, from a game of chance? There are only two clues left on the wellspring. Did a pretty great job of that. Oh, he didn't parlay with this Amora, though. We still got a lot done. Now, Amina could go and do that but it would be a four will test. She's only got three will. She doesn't really need to stand here gambling. She could try and get the clues. It will help to have money and a guard will be coming here next time. We want to get the keys off Abaran. She's going to go to the slot machine. She's going to be no help at the casino lounge. So at the slot machines, there's a couple of clues. Spend a resource to discard the top three cards of the deck and check their game icons. If all three have the same suit or rank, gain three resources. So she moved, she'll try and gain some resources. They're not the same suit or rank, but she will get to remove a clue from the wellspring. And she'll do it one last time. And they will they all the same suit. We're about to announce that she failed. Uh, so she does gain three resources. There's no more removing clues from the wellspring of fortune. We have emptied it. So that's gotta be one good thing. Nothing to check off with that though. Uh, and that's, that's her three turns. She moved and gambled twice. But if she defeats this enemy next time, she can make her alarm level lower. And then maybe she can parlay is tomorrow we'll we'll see so enemies he goes counterclockwise but he's aloof Avaran goes clockwise resource and a card for for daryl and one for amina foresight this can help her avoid her weakness actually play when the investigator at your location would draw a card from their deck or the encounter deck name a card if the drawn card is the named card the investigator can cancel the card's effects and discard it or play the card at a minus two cost. So she can use Parallel Fates to look for her, her weakness in the top six cards. And then put it at the top where she knows it is. And play Foresight to avoid it. Okay, Doom on the agenda. So that's six right now. We might have to choose between doing some things right now. Because I'm a bit worried. Card for Amina. Inconvenient questioning. So the casino guard's already where she is. And she wants to fail this. She would like him to lose aloof. That would save her in action. She doesn't want her... Oh, she doesn't want her alarm level to go up, though. She'll take a damage for that. She'll play Foresight. So she's got five intelligence. Ooh, Elder Sign. She didn't need to do that, but it's gone. Plus two, you may move all Doom from a card at your location to another card at your location. Uh, she's not going to do that. So she succeeds at that. Daryl, you have an encounter, mate. Avarice calls. Oh, you haven't you haven't fixed your cards, mate. You haven't, tap, you haven't untapped your cards. What's going on? Avarice calls. Take two horror. We'll test heads one. His heads is three at the moment. And he'll drop a clue here to get plus three, which puts an evidence on research notes. So it's six versus two. Minus five! Yep, should have taken the risk, maybe. So he's got to take two more horror. He has got two health left. And his alarm level's going up by one. It's still only on three, so it could be a lot worse. Uh, but he's going to get an extra action on his turn. So should we have his turn first? So I remember this extra action. Oh dear, though. that he, He's not going to take it, but 
It gets rid of his plucky, actually, because it wasn't direct. It's got to go on his plucky card. So that's gone. Okay. That's sad. It's going to make this harder. Uh, he... Does he want to go to the casino lounge then? No, he's going to go and parlay with Isamora. That's his free action. Parlay with Isamora. The difficulty is now three. He could gamble first. Have we got time? Yeah! So what is he going to say? We're going to have to shuffle the deck. Uh, he is going to say player. So lower than 18, that is, isn't it? So the first we've got is a nine... So we want an 8 or lower. It is a 7, and an obsessed gambler goes into the discard pile, which isn't a bad thing. So he succeeds. He gets 4 resources. So he's back up to 9. And he can lower his alarm level, which I think was the point of doing it. And we want we want resources as well. It will help. So now he can parlay where it's 2 versus 2. He's going to use these cards that he was, he was keeping hold of. 3, 4, 5 versus 2 to parlay. He could get them back. He hasn't been investigating as much, though, has he? So the Chaos Bag says, Skull, half your alarm level rounded up. That is just going to be one. So we can put another clue on Isamara. There are one times the number of investigated clues on her. So remember that you convinced her to participate in the heist. We've done three things. We've got to think about going and resigning, though, as well. So he gambled. He parlayed. Does he want to wait here for Amaran? And he'll do the boots test. But he needs to be over there as well. Getting all the clues off this and finding the vent. He'll be okay. He's going to gamble again for his last action then. He'll wait for Aberan. He'll gamble. He will say player another time. Seven and an eight. That'll do for player. So that's another two resources. We might have been getting a bit distracted by all of the gambling. Uh, Amina is going to engage the casino guard. She's going to use the Abyssal Tome and add a Doom to it, so it will do plus two damage. So it will kill the Casino God in one hit. So she can use her other abilities, but she won't. It doesn't really matter, does it? Because they're all threes. Uh, so she gets three, four, five, six versus three. If she says her heads, actually, she could use Parallel Fates. Yeah, it's the same thing. She'll use Parallel Fates, so she is testing eight versus three. Come on, Chaos Bag. That is minus two. No problem at all. Takes out the Casino God, which raises the alarm by one, but there is no guard here or in a connected location, so she can lower it by two. So she's effectively lowered it by one, and there isn't a guard snooping about. She's going to exhaust Sin Eater to get a Doom off the Abyssal Tome, which does ready it, but she's not going to be attacking anybody again just yet. She will spend an action getting rid of that Doom, because she needs to. Remember, this Doom doesn't count. One of the Doom on each asset here doesn't count towards the limit. So that's her second action. Oh no, that's, that's three actions, isn't it? It was in engage, fight, flip. Okay, that's that's that that could be better, but it's okay. Aberan continues. Has a look at us playing some baccarat with the the lounge singer. Amina resets and draws a card. She's got another weakness, kleptomania. It goes into play in her play area for an action. Take control of an item or two resources from another investigator at your location, and then shuffle this back into the deck. Otherwise, gain a horror at the end of your turn. That's not too bad. She's got nine sanity. Could be worse, couldn't it? Daryl's got his other research notes. Just having the hands for it, he got rid of his Arcane Enlightenment that gives him another tome slot. He'd have to drop the newspaper, but he hasn't been able to drop as many clues as he might have liked to make the most out of the newspapers. You know, if you keep having no clues, in other scenarios, you'd be spending clues as well, so you'll be, there'll be more times when you have zero clues. So new round, we are on six Doom. Amina gets a Casino Guard who is spawning at the high rollers table and going counterclockwise. I mean, maybe next round we'll still be there investigating. I think it could be worth putting a evidence on him. And then for me, Suspicious Gaze. Test agility. If you fail, take damage equal to half your alarm level. It's only one. Or raise your alarm level by one. But I don't think it's worth worrying about too much. I will just half your alarm level. Oh, minus one. I only needed to do one thing to succeed at that. I failed at it. I think I'll take damage equal to half my alarm level, which is just one. Still got four health, four sanity. I'm going to be okay, I think. Okay. Daryl's going to try and get these keys. He's going to drop a clue to get plus three to his agility. So he's got six right now. Six versus three, and it's a plus one. That's fine. Uh, if he'd failed, he would have raised his alarm level by one. If you succeed, discard the top card of the encounter deck. And if its color is red, remember you stole Aberan's keys. And actually, he's not playing a game, so Daryl's grifter ability wouldn't have kicked in there. Uh, we have stolen his keys. We've only got a couple of rounds in it, though. We might have to run. So that's that's one action, but it isn't, is it? Because by dropping that clue, he gets a bonus action. So I think... Oh, and he should get an evidence on his research notes. He's going to move one, two. He'll just investigate for now. He'll lower the difficulty by two with his Kodak. So it's 
five versus three. He'll commit. The other scavenging. Six, seven. Yeah, seven to three's got to be all right, hasn't it? We'll let the chaos bag tell us. And uh, that is minus five. Yeah, he'll raise his alarm level to succeed at that. So that's only one clue. And he doesn't succeed by a number, so his scavenging doesn't kick in. Not great. Not been great for scavenging this game, have we? So Amina, I mean, she could just run up to me and steal two resources from me. But she can she can take the horror, really. Oh, do you know what she'll do? She'll move one, two, use her ability to take control of an item from another investigator, she will take my newspaper because she hasn't got any clues. The weakness gets shuffled back into her deck. That's all three of her actions gone, but I think that's okay. Sorry, I think Amina will get more time to shine uh, in part two, should that come. I don't feel like she's been given as much opportunity to flourish, although she's done some pretty uh, great attacking and gambling, really, have, considering she can't cheat. Right, Abraham moves to the high rollers. Oh, actually, the casino guard's going the Opposite way to what I thought, so I shouldn't have put an evidence on him, really. Resource and a card. Kleptomania's right back. <laughs> oh, that was a great shuffle. And it is time for Doom 7. I mean, I don't feel like there's going to be much chance of getting to the casino floor and putting some cards under there. Amina, inconvenient questioning. So the nearest non-unique casino enemy moves towards us. Although that's... He's at the high rollers table. He's not going to get to us. And then test... Books three, she won't bump that up. So it's just going to be a three versus three test. Minus five. Uh, so the casino enemies lose aloof at Amina's location. And her alert level goes up. And for Daryl, he's got avarice calls again. Let's see. He could test heads two. It's two versus two. And he can't really boost it by much. Or he could just take the two horror. If he succeeds, though, he gets two resources. He'll put a clue down. I know that's the opposite of what we want to do here. So, plus three to his test, and we get another evidence on research notes. So that's five versus two. And yeah, he'll use this knowledge's power. Six versus two. Come on, Chaos Bag. That is minus two. That is a success, so gain two resources. So he's currently sitting on 15 resources. But we do... Like, we haven't seen how we clean out the house, so maybe we want to have a load of money. Amina has got eight. Right, so I think Amina wants to go first with that newspaper. She's going to investigate. Although even with the newspaper, it's five versus five, isn't it? She could just play all of her cards. I feel like she hasn't drawn her assets and stuff as much. But well, she did have the opportunity to look at the top six cards and I didn't do it. Six, seven, eight. Or she just runs back. But no, it's three, it's three locations away. There's no point running back because she can't resign or put things under the floor. Should have done that at the beginning, maybe. Do you know what? She's, she's going to steal two money off me again. Oh, she stole my newspaper last time, didn't she? Shuffle Kleptomania back in. She'll just use it all. I don't know why she got rid of the Kleptomania then. Uh, she is going to investigate then. So it's eight versus five. Chaos Bag tells us minus five. You can raise your alarm level by one to succeed. She will succeed because she'll take two of those clues away. Or shall she just leave it and then her alarm level's lower? She'll just leave it. She can try again, but now it is five versus five. And she might move enemies here. Yeah, five versus five and uh, half her alarm level is two. So she fails at that. There was just no point of going and just moving with an action. So it is all down to Daryl. He's going to use research notes. Test. Intelligence zero. He's got five. Just use it all. Six, seven, eight. Like the other research notes would have been so good to get out. Nine. Nine versus zero. Minus four. That still gives him five. So he can spend all four evidence off here to get these four clues. If it's successful, choose a survivor card not named resourceful in your discard pile. There's nothing that could help him with this test. He'll get plucky. Why not? Put it out. Doesn't take an action, does it? So it was an action to do that card. He needs to do an agility test. So the only thing he can do, I assume he can do the, do the action because there are no clues on here. And then put one of his clues on there. Because he's still doing the action. This is in the middle of doing the action to get plus three on it, which would put another thing back on there. So he has got six versus three. He'll need some luck and he gets minus three. He just about succeeds by the skin of his teeth. And we have found a vent. By putting clues down, he actually gets an action back. What's going to matter? Is having clues going to matter? It does say, when an investigator is eliminated by defeat or resignation, place each of that investigator's clues on this story card instead of placing them at their location. So I assume having clues is going to help. What are we going to What are we not going to have enough of? Clues or resources? We'll go to the roulette wheel and investigate. So it is six 
versus three, seven, I'll do my deduction, and minus three, that means we succeed by one, scavenging doesn't kick in, but because I played deduction, we can grab both of those clues and see how all of this shakes out. So enemy phase, counterclockwise, clockwise. I think we've done not so bad for alert levels and stuff. And so we come to the Mythos phase. We put a Doom on House Always Watches, which is going to put it up to eight, which is the limit. And so it now says, The stray glances that you have started attracting from the dealers and guards have become more frequent. In a shadowed corner, a group of uniformed security gathers together in conversation. As you watch them, one looks at you and points in your direction. They begin to head your way. If the investigators as a group possess 10 per investigator or more resources, we might do actually. Daryl, 369, 12, 14, 17, 20. We got 25, I think. We cleaned out the house. So we're a bit bruised. Our alarm levels aren't so great, but I feel like objective wise, that's pretty good. I feel like, I feel like in a way, I didn't get either person's engine really started, but. Maybe that's because we were gambling and investigating too much. Hopefully clearing the wellspring is going to help as well. So resolution one. Status of investigators, we're alive for now. Thanks for checking though. You find yourself forcefully removed from the casino after attracting far too much attention. It is certain that soon your description will circulate among the staff. This will undoubtedly make matters much more difficult when the heist begins. I'm sorry, we meant to resign. We ran out of time. So that's, that's a downside then. Each investigator who did not resign raises their alarm level by two. Oh dear. So that means Amina is on six and Daryl's on five. Ouch. Investigators cannot spend experience or alter their decks in between Fortune and Folly Part 1 and Fortune and Folly Part 2. There is a great little thing I just wanted to show you because like these these things, again, far more useful if you were playing a campaign rather than just a standalone, but I got excited by them as well. Like the Raven Quill, I did get it, but I'd spent it to boost tests. You name a tome or a spell, so you name research notes, uh, play it and attach it throughout the scenario. When you resign or the game ends, mark a checkbox on the Raven Quill. These are the new customizable cards that come with the Scarlet Keys uh, expansion and it can have mind-boggling opportunities to all of these cards. The usual way you'll check them is by spending XP. You can spend up to 10 on a card. Its level is equal to half the number of boxes you've checked off. So basically, when the game ends, you can either reduce the experience cost of upgrading the card you named by one, or check another box off on this. And already we've got the attached asset does not take up any slots. Or name two more things that could get boosted. After you resolve an ability, an action ability on the attached asset, you may exhaust the Raven Quill to ready a different asset. It's, so much can happen. There was another one in there and Amina had Living Ink which is really cool. You pick one of your skills and it comes out with some charges, with three charges on it, I believe. You remove a charge each turn, but while it's out, you have plus one to that skill. Uh, you can get Eldritch Ink that adds more skills. So plus one to three different skills for so many turns. And then Imbued Ink, which she does have, Living Ink enters play with two additional charges and takes up an arcane slot instead of a body slot. So you could have some armor or something on. Let's have our checkpoint though. With the stakeout completed, the time has come to plan out the actual heist. There are only a few days until Saturday night at Defi de la Roulette, the busiest night of the week and the perfect time to get lost in a crowd. The plan for the heist is simple, at least in theory. With the casino staff and security occupied by the Saturday crowd, you will first enter the public areas just as you did last time. There you will try to avoid notice as much as you can while completing any needed tasks. Once that's done, you will slip into the restricted areas in the back of the casino that are reserved for staff. This area holds the vault itself, where the wellspring of fortune is located. According to Isamara, the vault door is not only secured by solid steel, but also held shut by some kind of energy. If that wasn't enough, it is constantly monitored by guards, patrols, and the cultists of the fortunes chosen. It will take a carefully executed plan, and some improvisation, to succeed against all odds. With only a short time to gather supplies and practice the approach, there may not be enough time to rest and recuperate from your first tangle with the casino. So that is Fortune and Folly Part 1. I hope you'd like to see more. Let me know. Do you want to see Part 2? This has taken an immense amount of time to film, though. I'm not saying the scenario is really long. So for now, I'm going to be taking a break. And you can see how you would take a break. So just remember, like, the app is just an easy way to navigate the, the booklet that comes with the scenario. The scenario would do all of this as well. So we did all of the things. 
You will have to remember these for part two as well. So they go in the campaign log. It automatically writes all of it for us. Does any investigator have six or more combined damage and horror? Daryl. Unfortunately, yes. In your campaign log, record that the investigators need time to rest. For every one per investigator clues on the stakeout, so I think actually this is really bad. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you'll get to me before I film part two. But I think the stakeout card tells me when an investigator is eliminated by defeat or resignation, place their clues on this story card instead of at their location. I don't think that happens because we didn't resign. We couldn't have resigned in that last round. We didn't have time. But yeah, we could have paid clues to reduce each investigator's alarm by one or choose a card, uh, choose a role and upgrade your role. So the muscle, instead of just being able to reduce your alarm level by one and then two, you can reduce it by two as long as there's not another enemy at your location rather than a connected location. And the grifter can suddenly change up to two things on a card. So, you know, I can only change the rank, color or suit. I'd be able to choose two of those things to change, which might really help in uh, the next scenario. So yeah, unfortunately, I don't think I get to do that. Record the name of each roll card under, so there we go, we've got our rolls recorded. Record our alarm level. Oh dear. I thought Daryl was being really careful as well. Five and six. Record the number of clues on the Wellspring of Fortune. None. Uh, we we stashed nothing. This is, this is basically our, the things we could have stashed, we didn't stash a thing under there. Proceed to part two, the heist. And that's where I will join you at some point in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this playthrough. I hope it all came together nice and coherently. Because as you can imagine, there are a lot of things going on here. A few more plates to juggle than usual, for sure. I've been having a fantastic time with uh, Arkham the Card Game and many Arkham games if you've been hearing me blather on over the last few months. See my Eldritch Horror playthroughs. And the Mansions of Madness one that's probably still going on at this point. Yeah, I loved my first go as Daryl. Don't feel like I enjoyed Amina, but I don't feel like she got anything going really beyond her weapon. Excited to come back though. Really enjoyed this scenario. We've played it once before as a four player game. I can't wait for the Scarlet Keys as well and to see what uh, this is going to mean in the wider world. Again, this is all made possible thanks to Patreon. Thank you so much, everyone, for your support. And if you enjoyed this and you're able to, uh, please join up there and let me do more things. Let me know what are the things you would like to see. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you for the next game. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm.